Hi everyone, this is Abigail from Life of Material Design. Today I'm making a fall pillowcase on a budget. So I just got this pillowcase from the Dollar Tree. It was $1 and I'm taking it out of the packaging. So you'll notice when you take it out of the packaging, it's really wrinkly. So we'll take care of that in a little bit. But I noticed that this satin pillowcase was a bit too shiny. So to fix that problem, I just looked at the material on the inside and it was less shiny, which was more to my taste. I also liked that the edge of the pillowcase was a little bit more rugged looking. So I decided to stay with the pillowcase turned inside out. So to get those wrinkles out, I just ironed the whole thing. You wanna make sure all the wrinkles are gone because once you paint it, you're not gonna to wanna to iron it again. So I just recycled this cardboard from a cornflakes box, put that inside the pillowcase to make sure that the paint doesn't soak through onto the back of the pillowcase. And then I just smooth it out so that I can paint on the flat surface. So you'll want to find inspiration. For me, I bought this pillow. There wasn't another one like it, so I wanted to make a little matching pillow. I also found this design on Pinterest that was really cute to me, so I wanted to kind of copy that. Found these paints I had already from a previous painting I did, and then I just used some brushes I had and a paper plate to put the paint on. So you'll start sketching out your design. For me, I just drew some ovals on the fabric so that I kind of planned out where my pumpkins should go. These shouldn't be too noticeable because that will stay on the pillowcase after you paint it. So then I looked at the pillow that I was using for inspiration and found some colors. So my main colors are gonna be gray, white, and then that dark teal coloring. So to start off, just go in with the gray. I'm just doing nice long rounded strokes to make the pumpkin shape. I really like the texturing, so I, it doesn't really matter to me if I have some brush strokes that are out of place or not as thick as the rest. That just makes it more interesting to the eye, in my opinion. You'll want the paint to be kind of thick so that you can blend it later when you go in with other colors. And pumpkins have multiple bumpy rounded edges, so that's why I'm making multiple lines going, wrapping around the front. Now I'm painting in the stem. After I did a few pumpkin paintings, I kind of realized that the stem should go last, but you can always just do it first like I did and then go over it again later. So now I'm going in with the white paint. I didn't clean the brush because I want the gray and the white to kind of blend together. So I just went straight in, got that white on there start blending it in with the gray. Once again, just like last time, you want long rounded strokes in line with the other one. And I like that textured brush stroke as it goes out. And you want the white to be brighter on the front of the pumpkin. That'll make it look like the light is coming from where you are standing and give depth to the rest of the pumpkin. So brighter on the front and then a little bit more gray than white as it goes around to the sides and the back. And just keep blending it out. Now I'm mixing the gray and the white together, get a 
in between color and just feathering that in with the rest of the coloring just to make it a more even blend. I also went in and added a little bit of with that medium gray color to the background to make the pumpkin look a little bit more 3D. I got this inspiration from that pillow originally. I'm just copying the shape of that pumpkin from the pillow. And then I went in and added the darks and the lights to give it some more depth. And then I'm just touching up the stem on the pumpkin, like I said earlier. So now just follow that over and over and over and add as many pumpkins as you want to the pattern. Honestly, this did take me about three to four hours to do completely. Then I decided to go in with a teal color. I had to decide which pumpkin. I was debating between this one and that one. Decided to go with the bigger one on the left. Just from an artistic standpoint, you probably don't want the accent color to be in the very center. It just is not as pleasing to the eye. So to have it offset a little bit just makes it look a little bit better. So now I'm just doing exactly what I did with the white and the gray, but instead I'm doing a lighter blue to a darker blue. So this front bump on the pumpkin, that's going to be the brightest, whitest of the blues. And then as it goes towards the back, it's going to get a little bit of a darker blue shading. I lightened the gray on the edges of the pumpkin as well with some white. So now I'm going in with a darker teal color just to add a little bit more shading. You could create this color by just adding a little bit of black or gray to the blue that you already had originally, but I happen to have a darker teal so I just went with that. And just keep feathering that up, blending it in. So just fold over the top and then just set it on your couch as is. Another step you could take to go a little farther, you could sew the top shut and just make it a permanent pillow, but this worked for me. So all in all, this pumpkin pillow cost me, if I didn't have any of the supplies, it would cost me about $4 because the paint is 50 cents per color, the pillowcase was $1, and then the brushes. But because I already had everything, it only ended up costing me $1 for the pillowcase. So for the price, I think it's definitely worth it for such a cute little pillow that matches perfectly with the one that I bought previously.